After years of working through a thicket of regulatory matters, Virgin Orbit intended to make history in the UK on Monday night, January 10th, but pitifully, the flight ended in a devastating failure. More seriously, while its biggest rival, SpaceX, reaches orbit so easily, some financial analysts believe the company will run out of money in March. So exactly why did Virgin Orbit's first launch from the UK fail to reach orbit, and can the company avoid bankruptcy? Let's look at everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The Virgin Orbit mission called Start Me Up after the famous 1981 Rolling Stones song aimed to be the first ever to reach orbit from the United Kingdom. Everything went well during initial phases of the historic launch attempt by Virgin Orbit on Monday night as the rocket started its journey to space over the Atlantic Ocean southwest of Ireland. Unfortunately, after this point, the information from Virgin Orbit's webcast and its Twitter feed became confusing. Although the webcast telemetry data suggests the rocket's altitude started dropping, the host said nothing about this and instead explained that telemetry data from the rocket could be erratic. And a few minutes later, Virgin Orbit tweeted that its rocket and nine payloads had successfully reached orbit. Only they had not. 35 minutes after the rocket's ignition and long after it should have reached orbit, the company tweeted that a problem had occurred. We appear to have an anomaly that's prevented us from reaching orbit. We're evaluating the information, the company said via Twitter. The earlier tweet, claiming mission success, was deleted. The failure of its first international launch is obviously a blow to the efforts as well as to Britain's emerging space program. Monday's attempt from the UK, a historic first orbital launch attempt from that nation, was a high-profile opportunity to show investors what the company was capable of and to impress British officials who were on hand to see the rocket-carrying airplane take off from a spaceport in southwestern England. UK officials had worked for eight years to bring a horizontal launch capability to spaceport Cornwall, which is situated on the site of Newquay Airport, a former Royal Air Force station. During that time, officials from the spaceport, the UK Space Agency, and Virgin Orbit have worked to address regulatory concern about handling the rocket in Cornwall and launching it over international water to the southwest of Ireland. I feel confident and I feel focused and I feel ready to handle whatever comes our way, Melissa Thorpe had a spaceport Cornwall said Sunday during a news conference with reporters. I'm so excited the public cannot wait for the UK to come and join the exclusive launch club because it's going to feel good. Now the first orbital launch attempt from the UK has ended in failure. British officials who might have to be convinced to help the company financially stable were likely unimpressed. So were the rocket's customers, which included the governments of the United States and the United Kingdom. For Virgin Orbit, its first launch attempt from the UK was a load of tosh. We'll work tirelessly to understand the nature of the failure, make corrective actions, and return to orbit as soon as we've completed a full investigation and mission assurance process. That from Virgin Orbit CEO Dan Hart in a post-launch statement. However, the confident words belie a reality that the financial road ahead for Virgin Orbit is a very, very difficult one. Virgin Orbit started as an idea in 2011 by Sir Richard Branson as an offshoot of his Virgin Galactic space business with the goal of fully utilizing the White Knight aircraft. Eventually, it was decided the company, formally created in 2017, would use its own aircraft, a modified Boeing 747-400 named Cosmic Girl, as a platform from which to drop and launch small rockets. Lacking revenue on its own, Virgin Orbit was funded for most of a decade by the Virgin Group, that's a multinational company that owns and operates Branson's various businesses, as well as an Emirati state-owned holding company, Mubadala Investment Company. Independent estimates suggest that over that time, Virgin Orbit spent as much as a billion dollars to develop and test its Launcher One rocket and air launch system. An obvious question is this, with such high development cost and a low cadence for a rocket that sells for 12 million per launch, how can Virgin Orbit be financially sustainable? In 2021, the company answered its short-term cash needs by going public, merging with a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC. However, funds raised from this merger were far less than anticipated. Upon announcing its intent to go public, Virgin Orbit said it anticipated raising $383 million from the proceeds of the SPAC transaction. However, it raised just $68 million from this process and instead had to turn to private investments for an additional $160 million to keep operating. 
In 2022, the company reported a net loss of $139.5 million through September 30th, with cash and cash equivalents on hand of $71.2 million. There's ominous signs about the company's financial state, however. The company made efforts to raise funding four times since September 30th, 2022. Financial industry sources said the issuance of a secured note is a red flag because it will make additional fundraising much more difficult. Why invest in Virgin Orbit if all the company's hard assets are secured by another creditor? The timing here is concerning. Effectively, it appears that after Virgin Orbit failed to raise equity capital in November, the company pledged all of its assets to Branson after exhausting its other options. Branson certainly could add more funding in 2023. However, as an economic recession looms and threatens Branson's other Virgin properties, it's not clear that he has the ability or the willingness to continue to stem the flow at Virgin Orbit. Yorkville to the rescue? Well, there is one other financial matter to consider. Earlier in 2022, Virgin Orbit signed an equity agreement with an investor group named Yorkville Advisors worth up to $250 million. However, the terms of the agreement are fairly complex. It is actually not an investment in Virgin Orbit by Yorkville, but rather a mechanism by which Yorkville sells shares to public investors. Therefore, while it might look like there's a $200 million amount sitting there for Virgin Orbit to tap into, that's unlikely to happen soon. And if the company faces a cash crunch in the next six months, which is likely, the Yorkville agreement will be of no help. Assuming a monthly burn rate of about $20 million, financial analysts estimate Virgin Orbit has enough cash to survive maybe until March. So it will need to raise significant additional capital before then to avoid bankruptcy. Perhaps the most likely source of such funds is the UK government, which stepped in with $500 million in 2020 to save the satellite company OneWeb from bankruptcy. Would the UK government be willing to do this for Virgin Orbit, which was founded by Sir Richard Branson? An argument could be made that basing Cosmic Girl in Cornwall would give the UK government a sovereign launch capability. However, there are several other UK-based companies, including Orbex and Skyora, that are likely to come online in a year or two with domestically launched rockets. Accordingly, a UK government investment in Virgin Orbit would seem less justifiable. The UK also probably can't save Virgin Orbit because SpaceX is more than enough. Elon Musk's company launched 61 missions in 2022, all orbital, nearly doubling its previous single-year record of 31, which was set in 2021. The new mark represents an astounding cadence. Musk said in August that SpaceX is aiming for up to 100 flights this year. That would be nearly two orbital missions per week. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.